followers. Today we're going to be doing something a little fun and exciting. We are going to be making a fun circle shaped macrame piece. So we're going to be using one of our wood rounds and then a dowel to attach um, our macrame to it. So I'm really excited about today. So let's go ahead and get started. So a few things that you are going to need is a 1 fourth inch dowel that I have here. I have some large whole wood beads. I'm also using our 2 millimeter um, macrame. I'm going to be using a walnut gel stain and then of course a ruler and a brush to add that gel stain. Um, one thing you will need with that gel stain is also some paper towels to wipe it away. And then to cut this board, I am using this controlled precise cuts. It's also great for cutting those dowels. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first is I'm gonna roughly find the center of my circle here and I am taking my ruler and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a line right across. So that is gonna be my cut line. So I don't have a setup to go ahead and cut this. Um, I do find it easiest if you have it setting over the edge of either a table and where you start cutting you hold your hand whichever side and just kind of slowly go back and forth until you get it started and then you can um, make your way all the way through the board. But making sure you have a, be, are able to have a firm hand um, on one half while you cut the other is going to be key here. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that off screen and then we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so I have my cut piece here. Um, I am going to go ahead and make sure I figure out what side I like the best before I start to gel stain, which I think is this side. And I am going to go ahead, before we continue with that, you want to make sure you know how, what the diameter of your circle is. So this is just shy of 12 inches. So I want to make sure I'm cutting my dowel the same length. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark that. And again here it is easiest to cut this while you're hanging over the edge a little bit. Let me see if I can get cut it on screen for you guys. easy peasy just like that. So now I got my dowel ready for my board and I have my board that's ready to be gel stained. So I am going to look at which side I like the board to be stained. I like the markings on this side so I'm gonna do this. This will probably be my front. Um, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna hang this so I am going to make it that so I have this backside stained as well, but that is just a preference. And then there's two ways you can also go about attaching a hanger. So at this point, you guys could go ahead and drill two holes so you can tie your string to it. But I am going to go ahead and just show you how we can just hot glue it right on. So if you don't have a drill handy, um, it's totally easy and you can do it without a drill. But this wood does drill fairly easy. Um, so if you are able to drill a hole, it looks amazing if you're able to do that. So I'm just going to paint this all the way across. I'm actually going to put my paper towels behind me here so I don't get my surface behind me all painted. And I can double up on coats on this, but I'm probably just going to do the one coat. I'm not going to want it much darker. But again, that's just a preference. So if you want some darker wood, then what's going to end up happening here 
then feel free to let it dry and just go ahead and do one more layer of this walnut gel stain. Again, I'm using that walnut gel stain. It's so beautiful. If you have not played with these stains yet, they are a must. Such an easy way to create a beautiful dark stain look on your wood. Okay. Almost got it all done. Now that that's all painted in, what I'm gonna do is take this paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe off anything excess. And you can see the grain coming through as I wipe away that stain. Okay. So again, I am gonna go ahead and flip it over and I am gonna do that other side and then I will come back and we will continue the project. Okay, now that I got both sides all stained up, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and we're gonna go ahead and get started with that dowel here and the macrame. So let's open this up. And what I'm gonna do is it's gonna end up getting tied. So if I want it about 12 inches long. So I'm hoping to have mine about 12 inches long once the string is ha hanging, but I'm gonna give myself a little bedroom. So I'm gonna go up to 14 inches. And since I am gonna, the way I'm looping it, I wanna double it and fold it the um, macrame on itself. So I'm going to cut it right here. And now I'm going to use this string as my measuring tool, okay? So I'm just going to cut this whole thing of macrame into a little over 24 inches. So a total of 28 inches of, mac, of string. So all the way through the whole spool. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I have a little bit of budroom so I can cut it in the end and I don't have to worry about making any mistakes. So I'm just going to keep cutting until we're all the way through this and then we'll be back and continue our project. Okay, now that those are all cut, we're gonna start attaching it to our dowel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the string in half to make a loop. And that loop, I'm just gonna do, gonna open it and I'm gonna swing those loose ends through and tighten it. And I'm just gonna repeat that with every string that we cut out of that whole spool of macrame. So again, folding it in half so the ends are equal and making that loop and bringing those ends through and just tightening it all up. 
So I find it easiest if I have my whole pile of cut strings laying out so I can just kind of grab right where I roughly think the middle is and then I can adjust and I just repeat and repeat until I am all the way filled on this dowel. Okay, now I got those all tied except for one string, so I am saving one string behind. I'm gonna go ahead and open up those wood beads. So I am gonna go ahead and hot glue two of these right to the ends here. Um, if you wanted to not see the dowel coming through here and a little bit of the hot glue, I would suggest taking two of these off and then you can put them on at the end. But I'm just gonna go ahead Fill the inside with some hot glue. And then that same side, I'm just gonna slide right on, getting it even with that dowel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cool down. And we're gonna go ahead and slide on that other dowel or the other bead on the other side. So again, I'm just putting hot glue right up in there. Making sure I'm getting it on both sides of the beads of the bead. And I'm going to slide it right onto the end. Now I'm going to let those cool down before I do touch it because I don't want to mess up those beads. Um, I want to make sure they stay on straight. Once they are dry though, you can go ahead and look in them and make sure you have enough glue. Like I don't have glue all the way over here, so I'm probably going to take my hot glue gun and just get right on in there. Making sure it's nice and sealed. And I'll probably do the same thing with this side over here. Okay. Those are nicely glued in there. And I'm making sure all my strings are nice and tight. And we are just going to hot glue it right onto the edge right there. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun, put hot glue all the way along the inside here. I want to make sure it's not too thick of a line. Because I don't want it to ooze out where I see it. Okay. And now I just attach right to that bottom and apply a little bit of pressure. <clears throat> and let it dry. Now if you are afraid you didn't get enough glue, you can kind of squeeze your hot glue gun in there on the sides, but it should be nice and secure. And then one thing I like to do is I like to take that other half of my circle, or if you have a full one, in case you messed up, um, you can go ahead and put it right down. So you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm using a full one, but 
I want to make sure that this is going in a circle. So I am just going to take my scissors and cut along. Now I can make this, I'm going a little shorter here, but if you guys want this to be longer, you could go ahead and make it longer. Or you can totally freehand it. Since I have a little bit longer one on my last uh, model I did, I am doing shorter just to kind of have it a little bit more symmetric with the top. But again, that is just personal preference. The last one, I believe I only cut about two inches off. double check and see how that goes with my circle here. It's pretty dang close. There's a couple areas that need a little trimmed up, but I eyeballed that pretty dang good. Another thing you could do is you could um, take a Sharpie and mark your uh, macrame with a Sharpie. Now from here, you could go ahead and leave it like this, but I personally like how it looks when you pull all those fibers apart. So you're gonna go string by string and pull all of them, all of them apart. Now to hang it, Let's show you. I'm gonna, I don't want it to be a simple little hanger. Um, I could just hot glue and do a little loop on the back. So it's like that, and that would be darling. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some wood beads this round, since I already have this package. So, <clears throat> let's string on, how about eight of these? I think eight would be a good number. Three, four, and remember, this is off that extra string I had, that last one I left. It wasn't extra, I purposely left it because it's what I'm gonna use for my hanger. Two more here. Now, this is getting freed and I could easily cut it, but it does if I just spin my macrame it goes in there nicely so i was just going to do a cute little tiny hanger but i could easily keep going oops and add a few more make it 12. and we'll add 
one more. I also like to do even numbers because that's going to give me an even amount of beads on one side and even amount um, when I hang it. So it will have that odd ball that I was trying to balance on. It's going to go right in between them all. So from here, once I get a mall string, I just go ahead and tie a knot. And then I'm going to snip it a little bit. And we're going to come in with that hot glue again. And we're just going to hot glue these right onto the back side. Again, nothing too fancy here. I am going to make sure I get those ends down because those will fray. But this is for the person who does not have a drill at home and wants to create this beautiful piece. You don't need anything fancy other than to cut your wood. Um, but you can still have a cute little hanger just by using hot glue. Okay. Once that's all dry, you can go ahead and flip it over. Okay, so the back is all dry. We got a connector on. Um, I wanna point out you can easily take this to the next level just by undoing all this braided macrame. So this is gonna take a little while, so I'm not gonna do this whole process on the video. Um, but just to have that different look, and I'll show you on our, my other board here, you can easily just fray those strings apart. So once you get complete, all those strings are going to look like this. Either way, it's super cute. Just two different looks, okay? And now from here, if you love this, you can easily just pop it up on the wall or we could go ahead and just give it that extra um, personalization and you could go ahead and add one of our wood laser cut words. Um, I really like this gather because it's perfect for um, the holiday season um, and just welcoming those into your home. But another thing you could do is, I got a nice painted one here. It's got that fun teal colored, um, it has no loops, so I can kind of set it right above and offset it. And it gives it a completely different vibe. So check out those words. Again, you could just hot glue them right on or E6000. But either way, they just make such a beautiful statement piece. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, you do not have to untangle all of these strands where um, they're a little bit more fluffy like this, but you totally can. It does take a little bit of extra time, but it is just your pers personal preference. So let me bring that other one in here one last time. So you can see the difference. Let's bring this other one over. So completely two different looks. Just really depends on what you want to go for, you guys. Um, I can't wait to see what you all create. Let's go ahead and zoom out. So you guys got same technique all the way through except for the end and untying these. So as you guys can see, you can get two different looks that are just as beautiful. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed following us today and I can't wait to see what you all create. Um, tag us on Facebook, tag us on Instagram, um, just at Craft Warehouse or hashtag Craft Warehouse. We love to see what you guys are creating and how you're getting inspired. All right, you guys, happy crafting.